morning and warm welcome to you all for the Turtle Smart Talk series Lecture 5, Full Depth Recycling FDR by Engineer Ajay B. Pujari, Product Manager, Virgin Private Limited. Turtle Smart Solutions LLP has gained widespread reputation as a civil engineering consulting firm in Kerala over past few years. The firm mainly works in pavement engineering domain. The firm caters services like engineering surveys and geometric design of roadways, pavement design, design of bituminous mixes, and act as technical advisory for other similar organizations and contractors. The firm also provides project management consultancy services and laboratory services to contractors to aid them to keep quality aspects in control. The firm has a vision that academic industrial collaborations can help practicing engineers in, no, in more efficient uh, decision making. Smart Talk series is such an initiative to provide a knowledge sharing platform among engineers and academicians through interactions with eminent technocrats from academics and also industry. And now we cordially welcome all enthusiasts to our fifth session in the series organized in connotation with Association of Engineers Kerala, Thiruvananthapuram District Center about full depth recycling by an eminent and young engineer who is also an industry expert in the sector. Now, I request engineer Deepthi, Assistant Professor PWD and District Secretary of Association of Engineers Kerala, AOEK, to deliver a few words about the organization. Thank you. And good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Deepti, myself Deepti. Secretary, Association of Engineers, uh, Kerala, Thiruvanandapuram chapter. Um, um, on behalf of the organization, Association of Engineers, Kerala, I would like to welcome all for joining us today. And our association, Association of Engineers, Kerala, is a non-profit organization of about 4,000 engineers from Public Works Department, Irrigation, and Local Self-Government Department of Kerala Government. Every month, we are conducting technical session to update our engineers about new technologies in our uh, field. We also conduct an annual sports and cultural meet for our serving and retired engineers and their family members. Our association en encourages research and free discussion on engineering problems that we are facing. Um, this is our uh, fifth session with uh, Turtle Smart Talk Solution. Um, I'm so happy uh, to be a part of this session also. I would uh, like to welcome uh, Sri Ajay, Engineer Ajay B. Pujari for taking, our uh, taking this session on full depth recycling and sharing his knowledge to, our, uh, to us. Thank you, sir, and welcome, sir. And um, once again, I'm, I'm welcoming you all to uh, the session. Thank you. Thank you, Deepthi. Yeah, th thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, Deepthi, ma'am. Now I request Mr. Jidin Korean Andrews, Consultant, Turtle Smart Solutions, LLP, and Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, St. Kitts College of Engineering, to formally introduce and invite our guest speaker. Uh, good evening, all. I hope I'm audible. Today, the job entrusted with me is to invite the speaker of the day, Engineer Ajay B. Pujari. Uh, Ajay B. Pujari is presently working as the product manager for Rajan Group. Uh, India, and he obtained his bachelor's degree from NMAM Institute of Technology and his master's in transportation engineering from NIT Suratkar. He has more than six years of experience in the transportation engineering sector. He is having in-depth knowledge in traffic simulations and payment designs. He is also a winner of MD Excellence Award for Valued Contributor of the Year 2020. His area of specialization is called milling and recycling. He has all he delivered several sessions on FDR. I was fortunate to attend some of them. And I strongly believe that he'll be able to throw some lights on the aspects related to FDR technology, its execution, and some of the concerns in the field. Now, before starting the session, I would just like to add one point. Immediately after the session, we will be having a panel discussion wherein we will be taking up more questions and having discussions. So I request all the participants to keep muted during the presentation. And if you have any queries, you can pause in the group. And without any further delay, I'll invite Engineer Ajay B. Pujari for the session. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir, for the introduction. I think my screen is visible. 
yes sir yes yeah sir. yeah yeah so so welcome everyone so myself ajay from vidgan group so vidgan is a equipment providers for this uh, fdr technology and uh, in my presentations so i'll be taking you through what is fdr how it is implemented uh, and what are the equipment used for the construction of this technology and also i will throw more light on the various indian states where we have adopted this technology and i will be going through the various job site indian experiences so yeah so before going into the topic just a brief info on our company so vidgen is a german company and we have our local manufacturing facilities at uh, china brazil as well as in india so in india we have our headquarters at pune and we have been in india since 25 plus years and we have roughly five strong brands in road construction as well as in road rehabilitation sectors in the white line we have the vidgen line where we uh, supply to our customers the coal milling machines the recyclers which we use in this fdr process then we have the slip form pavers for concrete payments and also we have the surface miners in the green line we have the fogley brand where we have the asphalt pavers and also we manufacture some of these products in the indian market in the orange line we have the ham compactors where we have different kinds of soil tandem as well as pneumatic tire rollers in the cleman brand we have our screen jaw and crushers where we export also for the overseas market and the last brand is benning oven it's the asphalt batch mix brand it's not yet been operational in india so these are our five strong brands and we come under john deere group of companies so this is our pune factory in uh, down maharashtra so we have our local manufacturing facilities where some of the products we manufacture in india make in india and also we export to it to the overseas market so some products like the milling machines and the recyclers we directly import it from germany so now getting back to the topic so what is fdr so as you i think you have uh, gone through many of the session regarding this fdr technology so it's a payment rehabilitation method where all of your payment asphalt section and your predetermined amount of your sub base or base material is treated to produce a very homogeneous stabilized base layer so that's what we call it as a fdr layer so we get a very homogeneous stabilized base mix which has a very high ucs value then we seal it with an asphalt coating on the top of this fdr layer so in this process we are going at a depth of 25 to 30 cm that is 250 to 300 mm in a single pass so since we are going since you are working at a very high depth so this application requires a very sophisticated and a very high powered recycler or a stabilizer with a very strong milling drum so here you can see this is the milling drum inside the recycler so it's made of tungsten carbide and this is uh, capable of pulverizing your different layers of your asphalt pavement along with your added cement as well as additive and here you can see this is the uh, blue line which is a water line so it is connected this machine is connected to a water tanker and it sucks uh, water as per the omc requirement so you get a very homogeneous layer of the fdr layer so oh, fdr this technology ensures you 100% reuse of your existing asphalt layer so maybe you might require some of the fresh aggregates it depends on your gradation and we require roughly 4 to 6% of additives like the combination of cement and commercial stabilizer in the case of rural roads so as i said we get a very high modulus when we uh, adopting this technology and also the stabilized bases they offer a very high absorption of load transfer and also due to the reduced range your deflection on the upper part of pavement is reduced so this gives you longer service life of your pavement so this technology you are reusing 100% of your existing locally available materials either of consisting of soil or aggregates so we require only 4 to 6% of uh, additives so we are cutting down on logistic your truck imports carbon emissions so you are recycling everything so that's why it's called a green technology so some more benefits of the stabilized payment so you get a very strong and uniform base layer of homogeneous base layer with the locally available materials either consisting of soil or granular materials so you get a very high absorption of load transfer your stresses on your subgrade is reduced and also the stabilized layer it cuts down the permeability 
and it keeps the moisture out. So you cut down on the water ingress from the bottom and it gives you a longer service life of the payment. And also your rutting and deflection will be reduced by your stabilized payments. It's a definitely a cost saving mechanism. It gives you a stronger payment and also your thickness will be reduced. So how we are stabilizing the payment. So we add additives like the cement or the commercial stabilizer to the existing payment consisting of either your soil or your natural aggregates to increase or attain its required strength parameter. So you get a very high modulus greater than 3000 MPa and you get a very strong and homogeneous base layer which gives you a longer service life of your payment and also a better performing layer. So some pictures from the Indian uh, road job site job sites. So some places I think you might have come across where we don't have any asphalt coating on the top. And in some places I think we have only brick bats. So this is a general condition of our rural roads. So some more pictures of the existing roads in uh, rural areas. So when this FDR technology is applicable. So this technology is applicable where you have problems in your base maybe sub base or a parts of your subgrade layer. We recommend not to mill off your subgrade layer because it's a very important layer in any payment uh, structure. Or suppose you need to increase your structural strength of a roadway because now you want to design your roadway for a increased traffic volume. So this technology is applicable. Or suppose you want to widen your road from the existing maybe 3.5 meters to 5 meters or 3.5 to 5 meters or maybe 5 to 10 meters. Ah, yes. This technology is applicable. Or maybe your modeling granular cost is coming high, so you can adopt this technology. But before adopting this technology, I think some precautions need to be taken. And uh, this technology is not suitable in areas where there are drainage problems, such as uh, your saturated subgrade or maybe your inadequate drainage system to direct water from your payment structures. So you need to do a payment evaluation. And also, it's not suitable for all kind of your payment distresses. You definitely need to do a payment evaluation before adopting this technology. And also the stabilizing agents which you add, like the cement and commercial stabilizer to require to achieve your required strength parameters. So it requires detailed payment evaluation. It's not like you add 4% cement and 1% commercial stabilizer to all of your projects. So you need to do a detailed payment evaluation before fixing the cement and additive dosages. So your structural strength of the payment, they can be assessed by either your test pit investigation or your FWD test. So by the test pit investigation, you find your ten thickness, density and moisture of each of your uh, payment layers. And also you can do it by your falling weight deflectometer studies. So in test pit investigation, we get the thickness of each of your uh, layer, its gradation, the physical properties of the reclaimed material, percentage as well as nature of fines, the moisture content of subgrade. Your subgrade strength can be related through dynamic cone penetrometer test. And coming to frequency of sampling, suppose uh, in your project there is varying thickness and material throughout your uh, uh, project, then I think engineering judgment should be used and uh, we recommend to do sampling at every changing material location. That is one sample at every one kilometer of stretch. So samples you can either collect through helical augers or through a milling machine uh, where you can get the reclaimed material. And also you can do by the test pit, uh, digging the test pits where you get the thickness of each layers. And we collect the sample from each of these layers. So coming to the gradation, right now we have a very open gradation in adopting this FDR technology. So this gradation should be as per the mod specification, the Ministry of Rural Development. So suppose if you are not able to obtain the above gradation, then you, you need to blend the appropriate size of aggregate to match this specification. So coming to the choice of stabilizers, so as per SP89, the guidelines for the design of stabilized payment, so we need to evaluate the soil properties and also the percentage of nature of fines before identifying your type of stabilizer. Either it can be a combination of cement, lime or a lime pusanono stabilizer. Coming to the mixed design, so FDR mixed design, it involves three studies. You, ne you need to find a compaction assessment, your strength assessment, as well as your durability assessment. So for mixed design, so three different cement contents may be selected. 
So you need to find the maximum dry density and your optimum moisture content in each of the, your uh, cement contents by using your standard Proctor test. So then we need to cast 150 mm cubicle specimen at your maximum dry density as well as OMC at each of your cement contents to determine your UCL, the unconfined compressive strength at the end of 28 days. Then we need to perform 12 cycles of your wet dry durability test at each of your specimens at the, your estimated cement content. Here you find your maximum allowable weight loss. So then finally we plot a graph of your UCS and your wet dry durability results to determine your desired cement content. So this is how we fix the cement content for the project. So as per this uh, specification for FDR uh, mixes incorporating your cement as well as commercial stabilizer, your seven day strength should come in between 4.5 to 7 ampere. See some of the commercial stabilizers they claim that we get very high strength, maybe 8 ampere, 10 ampere. It's not recommended because the more the strength, the more brittle the surface will be and there will be more chances of cracking of the FDR layer. So suppose if you are uh, adding a lime or lime flyer stabilizer, which gains very late strength. So you should get this uh, specified limit at the end of 28 days. So right now NRID is working on the specification and I think in a couple of months, the course will be out. And I think this UCS value might come down to 3.5 ampere at the end of seven days. So we are waiting for the course and it might be out in a couple of months time. So small animation of this FDR process. To produce a new hydraulically bound base layer, a toad spreader from Stroymaster pre-spreads cement. Computer controlled metering feeders ensure highest spreading accuracy. Behind the spreader, the Vietkin recycler pushes a water tanker truck by means of a push bar. The recycler draws in water continuously via a hose connection. The powerful milling and mixing rotor mixes the existing material and pre-spread cement to produce a homogeneous mixture. At the same time, the required amount of water is injected into the mixing chamber via a microprocessor controlled injection bar. The pressurized scraper at the rotor plate levels off the recycled material to create an even surface. A ham single drum compactor with smooth drum then compacts the stabilized homogeneous base course material while a grader carries out finish grading. A tandem roller and pneumatic tired roller follow right behind to complete the compaction process. So yeah, so this was a brief animation on the FDR process. So I'll be taking you more of the Indian job site uh, pictures in the next slides. So this is a complete uh, set of equipment that is used for this technology. On the extreme right hand side, we have your cement spreader or your LED spreader. So this machine has a capacity of 16 meter cubes. So roughly you can store 20 tons of cement or additives inside this machine. So it's a microprocessor control system and its spreading capacity is of a width of 2.4 meters. It has three nozzles in the back, roughly around 0.8 meters. So you can control any of the nozzle depending on your job stretch. And the next equipment is this Wittgen recycler. So it is connected to a water tanker in the front side. So this uh, recycler pushes the water tanker forward in the forward direction and it sucks water as per your OMC, as per the required job site requirements. So this machine is capable of polarizing from a depth of 2 mm to a depth of 500 mm in a single pass. And uh, as you had seen in the animation, uh, this is the mixing chamber. We have the milling drum inside this uh, machine. It polarizes your different layers of your payment along with water as well as your pre-spread cement. And the final equipment, we have the pad foot 20 ton, 20 ton roller. So this gives you better kneading effect to the surface. So coming to the payment design for adopting this FDR in rural roads, so the existing thrust is polarized uh, along with the addition of your uh, cement or your combination of cement and commercial stabilizer to give you a homogeneous stabilized base layer. So it has a very high elastic modulus greater than 3000 ampere. So this cementitious FDR layer, they're susceptible to cracking due to your drying shrinkage 
and also due to wheel load induced stresses. So to prevent the reflection cracking onto the upper part of the pavement from the FDR layer, so we need to provide a crack relief layer either in the form of aggregate interface layer or a SAMI layer. SAMI stands for stress absorbing membrane interface layer. So then we finally seal it with a BC coating on the top, roughly around 30 to 40 mm. So in this process, we are reusing the existing locally available materials, either soil or the aggregates. So we cut down on the additional fresh aggregates requirements. So we are cutting down on the logistics requirements, carbon emissions. We achieve a very high strength. And also, this is definitely a faster mode of construction for rehabilitation of a pavement. So on the bottom of the screen, you have your chain of equipment for this process. So we have the cement spreader. We have the recycler connected to a water tanker. We have the pad foot roller for a better kneading effect on the surface. Then we follow it with a grader to grade it to the profile. Then we follow it with a tandem and a PTR to, to give a better smooth surface to the surface, existing surface, surface layer. Coming to NS and uh, National Highways and State Highways, we are already executing it. So since it consists of fresh aggregates, we call it as a CTV cement treated base layer with a very high modulus of 5000 MPa. Then again, we provide aggregate interface layer on top of it. And we here we seal it with the two coatings of asphalt because uh, we are working at a very high traffic volumes. Train of equipment is similar to that of uh, uh, rural roads. We have the similar set of equipments. So coming to our Indian job sites, so I'll take you some of the pictures uh, of our Indian job stretches. So this is our cement spreader. So as you can see in the bottom, we have uh, three different nozzles, 0.8 meters each. So it accounts to a total of 2.4 meters and it's a microprocessor control system. So you get an accurate dosage of cement spreader. So this is a Wittgen uh, recycler. So this machine is capable of uh, going up to a depth of from 2 mm to 510 mm in a single pass. And it is a, it has a very powerful engine of roughly around 400 kilowatts. So this machine is hydraulically driven and it has a four wheel drive system. And typically we can go up to a output of, it can give a output of roughly 800 square meters in a hour. So roughly we are talking about 5,000 square meters in a day. Then you have your pad foot compactor, the 20 ton compactor to give a better kneading effect on your existing surface. Then we grade it to the required profile using a grader. Then we follow it with the tandem roller and PTR. So this is the final surface of the FDR layer. So we need to cure it for seven days. So some of the Field testing, which we can do while uh, evaluating this technology, we can definitely check the gradation, which is coming out of the uh, stabilizer. We can collect the sample and check the gradation analysis. We can check the moisture. We can check the cement, which is coming out from the cement spreader. We can place a tray and check the cement applicable rate. You can check the kg per square meter on a particular area and we can cross verify it. You can take the course of the FDR layer for UCS evaluation and you can check your density using your in place density using your density gauges. So after curing, we put a prime coat of uh, slow setting emulsion. Then it is followed by a uh, laying of your geosynthetic membrane on top of that. And after a hover, you put a tag coat of RS uh, rapid setting emulsion one. And finally, we, after a hover, we seal it with the BC coating on the top. So this is a complete process of uh, FDR uh, layer. So the existing damaged layer, uh, we pre-spread cement as per the requirement. Then this stabilizer pulverizes the existing material along with your uh, pre-spread cement as well as commercial stabilizer. So some of the commercial stabilizer comes in the powder form as well as in the liquid form. So powder form, you can spray it using a spreader. And in the liquid form, we add it to the water tanker. So this stabilizer sucks water as per your OMC requirement and it gives you a homogeneous monolithic layer. So this is a drum inside your stabilizer and then we have your pad foot compaction and this is the final layer. So this is a complete summary of your FDR process. So coming to benefits, so as you know, we are 100% using the existing aggregates. Maybe you require some uh, 5 to 10% of fresh uh, aggregates depending on your gradation. So we are definitely cutting down on your uh, fresh agreement transportation. So we require only four to 6% of your binders. 
so we are cutting down on your uh, transportation cost emission levels and it's a very green technology so since you are doing it, this fdr in an in situ way with the help of your specialized machines so this delivers you a very high performance and it gives you a very homogeneous stabilized base layer so this gives you a longer service life of your payment so definitely it's a faster mode of rehabilitation of a road you can definitely do one kilometer in a 48 hours so practically you can take 10 kilometers in a month so coming to fdr in india so various i will be taking you through the various states where where we have implemented this technology so in up up rrd as you have known so there are roughly 5000 kilometers of tenders being awarded uh, for adopting this technology so we are, here we have uh, stabilized the black cotton soil in maharashtra in national highways using this uh, recycler again some pictures from up so this was a recently concluded project in bangalore so uh, it was a pilot project of 25 kilometers in bangalore so since the elections were uh, coming up the department were very keen to complete this project in a span of 2 months so we started in jan and we completed this project in uh, february uh, sorry march march and we had completed this project so well ahead of this election schedule so some more pictures from the andaman and nicobar islands so nhi dcl projects where we had executed this technology some pictures from maharashtra nh national highways again from up from state of tripura maharashtra rural roads here we uh, we added some fresh aggregate to match the required gradation again from andaman from nh dcl maharashtra pwd roads Uh, this is from the site from Tripura. So we had only jama bricks in the existing top. So here we are spreading the cement on top of it. So then comes your stabilizer, where you are pulverizing the existing crust along with your pre-spread cement and with the addition of your water. Some job site pictures. So this is the complete process. right from your cement spreading to your pulverization a small side video are ladke laga aapne ye cement idhar dalo ladke kahan hai So we are spreading the cement on your existing top. Labor gang, labor. Labor lao, ye dar dalo. Dar. Ha. Now we are supplying the which is connected to a water tank. So it sucks water as per the requirements. So this is an existing project which has been happening in Kerala. I think you might have been come across this. It's a Kifi project in Patanapuram. So we have roughly two machines working there, and uh, uh, we are widening the project from the existing stretch, and uh, we are we are spreading cement roughly around twenty seven kg per square meter and adding to roughly around one nine five kg per square meters. So it's an ongoing project in Patanapuram in Kerala. a small video on that
some more job sites from Kerala. So this project was uh, two year old where this was the existing condition of the road in Kerala. And uh, on the left side, you can see we have spread the cement. On the right side, we are spreading the additive as per the GMF. So this is a mixing chamber of the machine. So where you have your complete aggregates, your cement and additive before your polarization process. So this is a mix coming out from the back side of your uh, stabilizer. On the right side, you can see the pre-spread cement as well as your additive. So machine is working on the left side. Then comes your pad foot roller and your grader. Then we are queuing it. And the left side, you can see the we are laying a wearing course on top of it layer, FDR layer. So this is the finished load bed in Kerala. So this project was executed two years back. So coming to the summary of this process, so definitely it's a smart, sustainable and a very cost effective method of rehabilitation of any payment structure. So you're making the complete use of your uh, existing available material, either in the form of soil or aggregates. So you get a very strong base layer. So it just gives you a longer service life of your payment. You're cutting down on your fresh, fresh aggregates requirement. Your logistics is down, your transportation is down, you cut down on the emission levels and definitely it's a very green technology. And also it's 25% cheaper than your conventional payment design. And also it's a faster mode of construction. In terms of, in the place of cement treated subbase or CTB, we can go up to a production of roughly 8,000 square meters in a day. So coming to savings in last five years, so we have saved in roughly 4.5 lakh truck trips 60 lakh liters of fuel, 60 lakh tons of aggregates, 1 lakh tons of bitumen and 150 lakh kilograms of CO2 emissions. So complete, it's a green technology. So coming to our competence, so we have worked in various road projects. So we have executed in NHII, where we have executed 15 million square meters. We have done in NHI DCL, 1.5 million square meters. In PM, PMGS5 roads, roughly around 3 million square meters and in border roads roughly around 1 million square meters. So this picture is from Indo-China border. So when the machine was deployed 12,000 feet above the mean scene level. And this is a one single machine for multi-purpose applications. You can either conduct your soil stabilization, soil improvements, your cement rated subway, CTB or your FDR layer. So it's a one machine for your multi-purpose application. And roughly right now we have 100 plus recyclers which are operational across various Indian geographies. We uh, they are working in various stretches, right from soil stabilization to your FDR in rural roads. Coming to our network, so we are present in almost all of the states. We have our sales and service uh, offices and our headquarters is in, as you know, is in Pune. So coming to equipment offerings from our Wittgen group to our Indian market. So we supply this cement spreader to the Indian market. It's SW16MC, it's a cement or additive spreader. So it has three nozzles in the bottom. It, it's working with this 2.4 meters and we can fill up to 16 meter cubes of cement inside this machine. So roughly 20 tons of cement can be stored in this machine. Then we are supplying these two machines to the Indian market, uh, WR200 and WR240. So this machine is a two meter uh, milling drum and this machine is a 2.4 meter milling drum. So both these machines are working across India and both these machines can go up to a depth of 2 mm to 500 mm in a single pass. A short video on the on the WR series. Vietgen resets the bar with the new generation of soil stabilizers and cold recyclers. Three machines, world class to the power of three.
focusing on ergonomics and user friendliness. The spacious cabin and air sprung anatomically designed driver's seat offer a comfortable, individually adjustable workplace. All important machine functions can be performed via the multifunctional joystick on the right. Ergonomically designed controls have been integrated into both armrests. The comprehensive camera system and fully glazed operator's cabin offer a visibility concept that is unique in the industry. The spacious cabin can be moved to the side, which permits a good view of the working edge on the right, and thus precise working flush to curb. Fully relaxed. State-of-the-art engines complying with all exhaust emission standards offer outputs that satisfy every demand. Vietgen onboard diagnostic systems guarantee high productivity levels and high quality work results. The direct mechanical drive transmits the tremendous engine power via the power belt almost completely to the heavy duty milling and mixing rotor. The crusher bar installed at the front rotor plate can be adjusted to produce the specified particle size. The pivoting scraper at the rear rotor plate ensures perfect leveling of the recycled material. The mixing chamber volume is adjusted to the current working depth and material quantity automatically by raising or lowering the mixing rotor at the mere push of a button. An automatic system lowering or raising the rotor at the beginning or end of the milling operation is available. The all-wheel drive system spreads the drive power evenly to all four wheels. Combined with extra-large deep tread tires, it guarantees optimum traction even on extremely heavy ground. The four-fold full-floating lifting column design balances out even major ground irregularities. The recycler retains its horizontal alignment. When driving crosswise on sloping terrain, the operator can adjust the machine to a horizontal position quickly by means of the so-called roll feature. Another highlight of the WR model range, the field-based steering system. All-wheel steering with synchronously steered front and rear wheels enables small turning radii of no more than 4.5 meters. Oversteering enables the rear wheels to be steered even further, achieving a turning radius of only 3.15 meters. Crab steering allows the recycler to be maneuvered sideways quickly. Strict compliance with the specified metering quantities is an important aspect of high-quality stabilizing and recycling operations. This job is performed by microprocessor controlled injection bars with up to 16 self-cleaning injection nozzles. One injection bar for the addition of water. One injection bar for water and one for bitumen emulsion, a tried and tested binder used in cold recycling. One injection bar for water and one with special nozzles for foamed bitumen, the innovative and cost-effective additive in cold recycling. The integrated binding agent spreader, ideal for construction sites requiring the dust-free addition of binding agents. 
The WR model range from Vietgen offers a very broad range of applications in soil stabilization and cold recycling, soil stabilization in residential areas, soil stabilization on industrial estates, Soil stabilization on airports. Soil stabilization along rapid transit railway systems. Soil stabilization for road pavements. Cold recycling of road pavements. The new generation. So yeah, I saw it was a long video, but I think got a brief idea so why we need accurate dosage of cement your precise depth of operation your proper spray rate of water so all these are important factors for getting a very homogeneous mix in your layer so one more machine which we launched recently is a wr240 with the spac so spac stands for integrated binder spreader so this machine has an inbuilt uh, binder capacity of 5 meter Cube. So we can store roughly 7 tons of cement inside this and this machine has a compressor in the front side of the machine and it is connected to a water tanker, sorry not a water tanker, to a cement uh, bulker. So this sucks cement into your spreading device. So this gives you continuous supply of cement and it gives you a better performance, continuous, uh, you get a very high output by using this machine. So it's a recently launched machine, a short video of that. So the machine is connected to the cement bulker. So here you can see they are placing a tray. So you can check the cement rate which is being spread by calculating the kg per square meter in the tray. So these are uh, compactor equipments which are manufactured in India. So which are used in this FDR uh, process. So this is a 15 ton pad foot roller. And this is our uh, soil compactor. So both these products are made in India. So yeah, so that was from me, from the technology, from the equipment side and from the job site experiences, where, how we did this technology. And uh, we have many job site places where currently this work is being happening. I think uh, you can contact me anytime. In uh, Kerala, it's working in Patanapuram. It's an ongoing project. So definitely you can visit there to know more of this technology. So thank you from my side. Yeah. Thank you, sir. It was a wonderful presentation from you, sir. And now we can start the panel discussion. I invite the moderator of the discussion, engineer Ajit Kumar, GS, an eminent practicing engineer who has more than 30 years of uh, experience in the construction field and tech positions like first project director, project management unit, Dribble Kerala Initiative, LSGD, second superintendent, uh, engineer PMGSY and now he's working as superintending engineer Thiruvananthapuram Corporation. Now over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it is uh, most relevant topic we are talking, discussing, especially state like Kerala. Resources are yeah. limited and very high demand on construction materials. Uh, nowadays, uh, due to scarcity of quarry materials and uh, frequent variations in the in the price of the road materials construction work in road sector are very difficult to be executed in kerala scenario i hope this type of new technologies fdr technology uh, can find 
solution for such hurdles. Uh, here we have, uh, we will start our uh, panel discussion with uh, Dr. Ali Johnson. I hope uh, Anil sir is with us. Anil sir, uh, professor and head of the department in civil engineering, College of Engineering, College of Engineering, Commander. Dr. Anil sir having immense experience both in academic and industry in the sector. He is also STA for NGSA. Sir, please share uh, uh, your experience with us. Uh, Ajit, sir, can you hear? Can you hear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, first of all, first of all, I will uh, congratulate uh, Ajay, Mr. Ajay Pujari, for his wonderful presentation. Uh, Virgin Group, uh, I especially thank Virgin Group that we have uh, recently had a One second, I'm having some echo. One second, I'm having some echo. We had recently visited uh, the uh, Virgin's, uh, Virgin's. Can you hear? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. You can hear me. Okay, I, I'm having some echo issues. Okay, now it's okay. So we have recently visited uh, Virgin's factory. So we are happy to see that they are having a live demo section for uh, session for us. And that was a wonderful experience with us, uh, with Virgin. And uh, hope uh, Mr. Ajay Pujari has explained almost all uh, aspects of the FDRs as well as uh, the machines they are having. So uh, regarding uh, the FTR technology, we are actually to start with the FTR technology in rural roads, especially in BMGSW roads. So we are uh, just prepared the DPRs and not actually involved in the construction as per as uh, till now. So anyway, we are expecting a lot of uh, hurdles, especially uh, when we are going to construct this in the um, uh, coming few months, I think. Uh, but regarding what uh, Ajay, Mr. Ajay also mentioned, as well as uh, Mr. Ajay sir has also mentioned, that regarding the FTR, the major highlight of this one is sustainability. Like uh, we are running short of aggregates, uh, and this technology will definitely uh, solve the issues of the lack of getting enough material for constructions. So, but there are a lot of concerns also. Like. Uh, you seeing how we go for FTR and all do all the roads are candidate roads for FTR. That's a major concern that I feel. So while selecting a road for FTR or full depth reclamation, we have to be very precautious. Uh, very cautious. Like uh, is this road is particular a candidate uh, road for FTR? So this is a major thing an engineer should um, evaluate while before you going for FTR technology. And another concern what we see is the addition of cement as well as the addition of stabilizer. So do we need uh, what is a dosage of stabilizer? So mix design and other things are very crucial in this case as well as the quality control. So these are some of the uh, things that I should highlight once we go into the FTR technology. So I think uh, better, uh, Ajit sir, the others can also have some their inputs. Then we will have a discussion. Thank you, sir. Sir, still come on. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Anil, sir. Next, we have Sandeep, sir. I hope Sandeep, sir, with us. 
Sandeep sir, uh, Chief Engineer of LAD and EW. Uh, he is having vast experience in the design and construction of rural roads. He was the former Chief Engineer of PMGSI. And uh, has also uh, started uh, FDR works in Kerala, in Kerala, LAD and EW. Sir, I hope uh, Sandeep sir with us. Please join us. So you are not audible. Uh, Ajit sir, we can go to the next person and uh, come back when Sandeep sir joins. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. So we can move on to the next person. When okay. Sandeep sir rejoins, we can start. in various states of India. He has PhD from University of Payment materials engineering. He can tell us more about uh, existing quality control mechanism of various FDR works in India. Sir, please check your experience. Shyam Nair, sir, can you hear? Hello. Hello, Hello. Uh, sir, please. Uh, your voice got disconnected. Uh, so you want me to speak up now? Sir, sir. Hello. Sir, sir, that uh, Shyam Nair, sir? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, I can hear you. Sir, sir, uh, sir introduction you haven't heard, sir. 
sorry hello sir the previous question you haven't had just i will i will repeat once again sir uh, okay okay sir yeah, yeah. sir shyam sir, sir is a professor of iit kanpur has much exposure in quality control of fdr works in various states of K india he has his phd from university of texas usa uh, his research area is payment and materials engineering he can tell us more about existing quality control mechanism in fdr works in india sir please share your experience <clears throat> Uh, hello uh, everyone uh, this is uh, shyam nayar so i am a uh, uh, graduate from uh, college of engineering trivandrum and uh, later on i uh, did my masters and phd in uh, us and uh, right now i'm a faculty at uh, uh, the indian institute of technology kanpur so my uh, areas of work primarily include uh, uh, soil stabilization that is the primary area that i work on and i had the uh, opportunity to uh, interact or rather uh, get associated with uh, fda works uh, back in us and uh, also fortunately uh, been tagged along with uh, uh, up rrda and uh, nrrda uh, over the last uh, couple of years where uh, uh, whole the whole uh, uh, boom in uh, the fda technology has happened in uh, uttar pradesh so luckily i was uh, associated with uh, Uh, with this uh, UPRDA and NRDA during that time. So at present, uh, in terms of what uh, Jitsar has said, uh, yes, I have been in this uh, area for some time now, and uh, uh, like what uh, uh, Anil sir has said earlier as well, this is a uh, an emerging technology, and uh, which uh, essentially uh, means that uh, there are more unknowns. Uh, in this particular technology than what we completely understand oh uh, yes of course there are many things that we do know about this but uh, when you are actually encountering uh, live uh, projects the challenges keeps on coming and uh, we have encountered many such uh, issues as a part of the works in up but uh, one after the other we sat down and uh, kind of uh, got across uh, all these uh, issues and now things in up are actually uh, going smooth uh, so in terms of uh, uh, the relevance of this kind of a technology in kerala i completely agree with what anjara said uh, because considering the scarcity of uh, resources that uh, we have facing right now uh, we have to look at options where uh, the uh, total available materials at a given location has got to be used in an effective manner and uh, fdr essentially is one such technology which Uh, completely uh, reclaims or reuses the existing material in a given section, and uh, the amount of uh, additional uh, resources, primarily aggregates, that are needed uh, uh, is much less in comparison with a typical or a conventional uh, construction work that we perform. So that way, it becomes more cost-effective, environment-friendly, and uh, 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 can be practiced in uh, uh, in uh, practically uh, most of the. almost all of the uh, existing pavements that qualify for a, a renovation or a rehabilitation work so that is the advantage of this technology and uh, in terms of uh, quality control uh, like what uh, sir was saying yes of course there are multiple uh, stages of uh, quality checks that uh, need to be done in this particular uh, area starting from uh, evaluating the gradation uh then uh, looking at the optimum moisture contents i'm talking about field applications at this point so uh, uh verifying the gradations then you have to verify the optimum moisture content uh the amount of cement addition uh the percentage of uh, uh, uh the chemicals that uh, goes in uh, into these mixes which has been defined as a part of your mix design process then uh, uh finding out the density then uniformity of mixing there are quite a lot of uh, uh things that needs to be verified uh, uh to ensure that uh, the final outcome of this whole process uh, is good and again uh, the bottom line is that uh irrespective of what we are doing it is ultimately the end product that matters so 
having all these different lines of quality checks uh, can actually ensure that you are ultimately having a good product which uh, lasts uh, the uh, over a period of time and it can be functioning effectively as a, a pavement layer so more or less this is what uh, broadly are some of the advantages that uh, uh, fdr sections have and also some uh, a list of some of the quality control processes that uh, we may have to uh, do as a part of the construction work. Again, as uh, the discussion progresses, if uh, uh, somebody has questions, we can, uh, I believe it is better to go into detail of all these things at that point of time. So, uh, uh, yeah, Ajit sir, uh, I can have the discussions uh, if there, are, there is a question that comes along about, uh, about that at that point. Hope that's okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Next, we have Sri Kumar B, Executive Engineer, Kerala Road Fund Board. He is the man who started the started implementation of FDR works in Kerala PWD. He can share the experience and the hurdles he encountered in Kerala scenario during execution. Sri Kumar, please. Thank you. As uh, what is FDR and what is the advantages or what are what are what are the construct, construction methodology? Uh, all are discussed here. So I just want to uh, introduce the first project which is being taken up by uh, KRB Kollam. As you are aware, as part of the initiative to take up new technology under KIFPI projects. FDR was taken up and uh, the uh, investigation for this uh, projects were done by the KIFPI technical team. As a first uh, pro uh, phase, nine roads, five roads in Trivandrum and four roads in Kollam were ta uh, taken up and the project in Kollam is the first to get on the anvil. Uh, it consists of four roads, that's, uh, as I already said, that is uh, Pallimukka Alimukka Road, Pallimukka Mukkadava Road, and Patanaburam Enath Road. These three roads are in Patanaburam, and another road, Ambalangunna Poriyadam Road, that is in Chadaimangana. All these four roads are grouped into a, into a single project, uh, about 50 kilometer length in, in total. Uh, and the first road uh, in Patanavira Mena is the first road in Kolla uh, where FDR work is started. The proposed uh, carriage is 5.5 meter for FDR with uh, 0.75 meter interlock on either side with a drain or uh, Irish drain as the case may be as, as site warrants. And uh, the first uh, hurdle or first task was to shift the utilities. As you are aware, Kerala roads consist of a lot of utilities. Water pipelines are everywhere. Uh, maybe uh, very at a very shallow depth, some um, about one feet over thirty centimeter below. So that has to be shifted. Uh, and uh, as it being a KFB project, KFB. He funds the KCB or Water Authority to shift the utilities and the uh, amounts were transferred to them. And it was a big task uh, shifting the utilities in time. As you are aware of the difficulties in Kerala to uh, make this happen. And uh, uh, as the the, it will be very difficult to have a, a repair or rather any crack, any damages developed. Uh, we have laid uh, uh, ducts, utility ducts at about 250 meter interval. That is the first thing to be done. At, uh, about, two, at uh, about 250 meter interval, cross ducts are being laid. Uh,
and uh, as the the work is progressing uh the, we have some uh issues with the uh, uh longitudinal correction as such and uh, uh, some uh, the, the project was envisaged with without uh, without adding any additional material uh, for this road but uh, it it, come, it it later came up that uh, some additional material is required to uh, provide the required camber and super elevation and the process is going on to have a final solution on this and uh, with this uh, i am concluding but uh, in the coming scenario uh, where more kerala roads are uh, proposed under fdr the utility uh, shift utility shifting especially the uh, shifting of water pipelines will be a major issue and that has to be addressed first and this is my uh, uh, suggestion to all the departments which are taking up this project thank you thank you thank you very much next we have srijit deputy director of kerala highway research board he has immense experience in the construction industry in india and in india and abroad he is also having experience in abroad uh he can contribute uh much to the design of fdr nexus in kerala pwd please uh, share the i hope you will share your experience uh thank you ajit sir and uh, thanks ajay for the wonderful presentation so since uh, we are uh, discussing about this mixed design method you know that uh, what ajit sir was mentioning so i have a few points to make regarding because uh, i mostly uh, the whatever fdi works i work actually it was working abroad so i have been worked on many project in uh, as far as fdi is concerned in india so what uh, what i'm seeing is the as a as a practicing engineer one of the biggest hurdle is you know the the, the unnecessary stricter grading requirements that is being put in irp sp 18 and as well as in uh, more specifications so so just a, just a just a uh, what you call a point of discussion uh, i hope uh, i understand the crri and all are working on another document so hopefully we'll come up with something uh, which is more workable Uh, but i would suggest you know the regarding the grading part my personal opinion my opinion as well as the international experience as far as the pci guidelines and all you know we don't need to look at too much into the grading part uh, and, uh, the thing is we should have it less than 50 mm 2 uh, inch size and then probably we can add one more seat say 4.75 mm from 50% that's it so that's my experience that works pretty well uh, and uh, as far as uh, uh, this mic design method is concerned that also uh, i have my own uh, opinion on that because mostly i was working based on the astm d558 and astm d559 so astm d558 you might be knowing because basically the moisture density relationship for soil cement mix design that is what we are practically we are using for the fdr mix design as well but the thing is we are using a sort of a cylindrical specimen and uh, when it comes to Uh, IRC, then probably we need to make it in the form of a cube, and you know we need to have uh, so the compactity effort and all. So what I found was uh, most of the cases, one or two, one or two mixes I tried in the in, in the labs and all. So whatever what I found was when you're you looking at an MDD and OMC for a particular mix, and then when you're looking at uh, making the compact specimen for the UCS, the compressive strength, probably the densities and all. You know, there are some. contradictions there so just uh, even even I, i would suggest that you know we can go with a, 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 a normal uh, proctor density mold itself to find out the ucs as is done in uh, us and all they call it uh, as per the federal highway uh, method so it, it's it's around uh, um, 100 mm dia and 116 mm high specimen can be uh, used that's one part and uh, another just a sort of suggestion i uh, just wanted to point out that i have seen many roads especially ctb roads in especially in africa and all so mostly there is no they are using only a seal coat either a sbst or a dbst so that is working fine and uh, i don't know why we are just putting in too much uh, pc overlays and all of that 
So I, I hope, I think uh, the LSED engineers are here. Probably we can have a look at one or two shine stretches for a long volume road of BCD uh, with a with a seal coat over it. So obviously, once you finish it, uh, roll it, compact it, and just put a seal coat over it and then see how it uh, performs. So rather than going for it. Anyway, uh, it, it will act as a sort of a SAMI layer as well. So in future, if you want to add another BC layer, that's also possible. So just uh, once uh, and another thing just wanted to point out that the, the big thing I found out here is, you know, uh, there is sort of an obsession uh, for these chemicals. I don't know what, the, of course, the chemicals or the commercial stabilizers are doing something probably. But I have a personal experience where uh, when, when I was working abroad, working for my US firm. So I was actually sent to one of the northeastern state just to inquire about all these things what is happening you got these chemicals because these chemicals are really precious you know i don't know uh what sort of ingredient goes in there so it just boosts up the cost if you look at the uh, rate analysis it will just eat up almost 40 percent of the cost of this whatever um, ctp that we are producing so uh i just want uh, all the i mean whoever is doing the big designs and just to go for a control mix with cement alone and then obviously with cement and uh, with and this chemical and then just come up with the sort of a uh what you call optimized and economical design so these are the just my uh thoughts uh thank you thank you sir Please. thank you Srijit. thank you very much, thank you very much. Uh, next we have sv patel eminent industry industry person from ultra tech cement uh, who can talk about the industrial practices uh, what will please share your experience Is he Patel not with us? Ajit sir, now we can take the audience queries. So if anyone have any queries, you can post it in the chat box or you can ask it directly. Mr. Patil, join now, just we can call him. Okay, okay. Okay, sir. We can wait. Thank you. 
कनेक्शन इसलिए प्रॉब्लम विद कनेक्शन यू हैव बीन डिसकनेक्टेड सर सो वी कैन टेक हिम लेटर वी कैन टेक हिम लेटर ओके 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 लेट अस लेट अस कंटिन्यू so we have the audience questions uh, so jasmine and we have put a question what is maximum traffic that the fdr road can hold hello Yes, yeah, yeah. So again, if you are working in the rural roads, I think we are designing for roughly around twenty thirty MSA. And if you are working in NHA, definitely you are uh, designing it for a very high traffic volume. So definitely, it depends on your mix design. Definitely, uh, if your mix design is well equipped, I think it will hold your uh, de uh, designed uh, this one workings. So right now in rural roads we are working at the uh, limited uh, traffic stretches of roughly twenty to thirty MSA. In some cases we have done for fifty MSA also. So, yeah. Yeah. Again, the difference is uh, primarily in terms of the thicknesses that uh, yeah uh, that has to be provided on top of uh, the CTB layer or rather the FDR layer. So if you are looking at a highway construction, you might be. uh topping up uh, the surface with uh, say about 6 uh, to 4 uh, to 6 inches of uh, dbm and possibly uh an inch inch and a half of uh, uh a bc on top of it whereas if you are uh, looking at a low volume road like uh, pmgsy roads you are practically uh, uh providing the ctb i mean fdr layer and uh, a surfacing of uh, bc about 2 and 1/2 cm to 3 cm which just about takes care of the uh, requirements for a uh, low volume road so it's only about uh, traffic uh, it's only about the thicknesses of uh, layers that needs to be varied depending upon uh, what kind of a uh, traffic is expected on these roads thank you sir uh, next question from uh, kishor chahan For eighty to hundred MSA traffic load, what percentage of cement plus additives are to be added, and what will be the cost per square meter for three hundred millimeter depth FDR? In Shamir, I think you want to answer, sir. Ah, uh, sorry. You want to answer, sir, to the question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, can you repeat yeah. that question one more time, please? I just missed it. Hello. Uh, uh, yeah, sir. Uh, for 80 to 100 MSA traffic load, what percentage of cement plus additives can are to be uh, added, and what will be the cost per square meter for 300 millimeter depth FDR? See, the amount of uh, cement and additives that needs to be added does not depend on uh, uh, the kind of. I mean, you cannot say that for a certain amount of traffic, this much cement needs to be added. uh so it practically depends on uh, the strength requirements uh, that needs to be met and uh, the mix design that you are using or rather the uh, particular uh, gradation of materials or the mix design that you are getting that defines the amount of cement or the cement additive proportion that's need to be used in a given section now like i said if the traffic is much higher than what we experience in a in a low volume pmgs y road then you will have to Put in additional layers like DBMs and uh, BCs on top of it, so that the load can be effectively taken care of. Now, in terms of the cost, uh, how much is the additive? Uh, I keep uh, messing up with numbers a lot, but uh, in my, uh, I mean, broadly speaking, it comes out to be around uh, uh, 20 to 30 percent of the total project cost is what the chemical cost is going to be. Uh, maybe. Uh, 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 So, Sandeep sir, if he's here, he can correct me over on this uh, statement. Hope I answered your uh, question. 
Hello. Srijit, sir, you have raised your hand. You have yeah, Jay, I have, uh, yeah. yeah, I had uh, two questions you know, to which I know, uh, because you mentioned that uh, the the polarization depth is can go up to 500. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I just, uh, and on a practical, you know, whenever we are working, you know, the, we just put a cap of, say, maximum 8 inch or at the most is 10 inch because even if your pulverizer can go up to 500 mm, the, the problem is with the compaction. So even with uh, sand contest as well, you know, we need to have a two layer. So what is your experience on that? You suppose in case you have work uh, to a depth more than, say, 10 inch or 250 mm. So what is your take on the compaction of the bottom layers? Even yeah, with the, saying, uh, yeah, you're correct, sir. Like 50 centimeter right now in India, we don't have a compactor which can compact 50 centimeters in a one go. So that's why we are not mm -hmm. going at 50 centimeters. And also we have mm -hmm. practically we have done salt stabilization up to maybe a depth of 350 mm. That's the max we have done in uh, this one in India. Okay. So, but this machine can go up to 50 centimeters. I don't know about abroad, whether they have done it 50 centimeters uh, in any of the projects, but Indian experiences, we are usually doing 25 to 30 centimeters at the max. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks. So even, 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 uh, even when we are using your recycler also, when we know that it is 200 mm, but I mean, on the mm -hmm. practical side, we just try to limit yeah, it to yeah. 8 to 9 to 10 inch. That's all. Yeah, so just wanted to know your experience on that. Yeah, Another and also there is no is compactor having... which can compact in India. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's right. Right. yeah. And second thing I just wanted to discuss regarding the overlap, you know, uh, because yeah. most of the cases are supposed to be 3.5 meter width road, and reverses, I think, if I remember correct, is 2.4 meters, isn't it? Generally, 2.4 meters. Yeah, width we have two are... machines. So one is 2.4 and one is 2 meters. Ah, okay, so anyway, suppose we are looking at a 3.6 meter wide. I mean, lane, we're looking at lane process because we are looking at each lane at a time. So obviously there will be an overlap. So yeah. one, 2.4 meter, then another 1.2 or whatever, 1.1 meter remaining. So how do we look at when we are adding water and all? So is it possible to just limit that? Even for the spreader, I heard that spreader is okay. The cement spreader, you can uh, close the nozzles and all. So what about the reclaimer? So I think in well, the animation, uh, there were 16 nozzle, nozzles of the water line inside this reclaimer. So you can on and off any of the nozzle depending on your oh, overlapping okay, okay. stretches. Yeah. So based so you on can, our requirement, we can do yeah, that. Yeah, based on your requirement, you can on and off any of the nozzles. Like the same cement oh, spreader, okay. you can off the one of the nozzles. You can off this also, similarly, depending okay. on your so uh, stretches. Means, so that means on the first run, suppose we are going for a 2.4 meter, and the second one, yeah. We are looking at only maybe 1.1 or 1.2. Yeah, and 1. 1. 1. 1. 1. 2. Yeah. 1. 1. 2, you can switch it off. Obviously. Yeah, switch it off and the machine will run dry. There is no addition of water okay. on the right side. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Um, sir, I have a question to Shyam, sir. Uh, so we are taking up so many projects uh, in FDR, and basically what it is understood is that the cross section uh, will be a stabilized pavement layer, uh, then a SAMI layer, and a bituminous layer on top. Uh, so in future, uh, what will be the rehabilitation strategy uh, if a thickness addition is required in future? What will be the uh, proposed rehabilitation strategy uh, so uh, when you are talking about uh, re recycling of this uh, fdr layer if that is uh, what your question was uh, yes, it can be of a little challenge at that point especially if you are using sami as a uh, cut off layer in your section now instead if you have a, a granular layer uh, wmm or any granular layer as a as a crack relief layer in your section, then recycling might not be a big issue. At the second stage, second recycling, I'm talking about. Now, normally, if uh, if that is not required, if you are uh, just do not having that much of a structural damage, then uh, uh, you already have a BC layer on top of it, and uh, uh, you can very well put a, a, a layer of, uh, or you can just strip away the existing BC layer and uh, resurface the whole thing by adding DBM or uh, another layer of BC, depending upon what your structural requirements are. But re-recycling uh -huh. of this section will be a little bit of a problem because of this layer. 
Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, next question from next question from Binod Jandas. Um, could you give some idea on the pavement design in FDR, like what parameters are considered, etc.? Sir. Hello. Yeah. Uh, so this makes design flow as I uh, talked in the presentation. So it involves your uh, compaction study, your strength assessment, as well as your durability assessment. So we need to cast cubes in the uh, labs and we need to uh, evaluate for its UCS evaluation as well as its durability criteria. So it needs to pass both these criteria. So this is how we do the payment design in the lab. Yeah. So Sham sir, you want to add anything to it? Actually, I forgot the specification uh, name. I think it is as per uh, SP 72 or uh, uh, so. Yeah, we are uh, doing combination of SP 72, SP 89 as well as mod specification. So. Uh, okay, yeah, that is uh, yeah. what I mean. I'm off in terms of number of these uh, specifications. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the practices that is mostly for uh, low volume roads, I think SP uh, 72 is the design yeah. criteria yeah. Design guidelines and basically uh, uh, all the parameters that is in there, which I, of course, do not remember off of my head right now. I'm sorry, uh, can uh, is basically what it is uh, adopted. Now, if you have a, a section that is of uh, higher traffic, then uh, I think SP, uh, 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 I think this one, uh, the IRC 37 comes into picture at that point of time. Uh, in terms of designing the thickness of his uh, above uh, layer surface layers. Uh, Sai, next query from Sai. Um, to oh, queries related to OMC, can you please throw some light on the mixed design of FDR, like which method we have to adopt uh, to find OMC and test used uh, to optimum dosages and of additives and recycling agents? Yeah, for uh, this uh, cement as well as uh, additive, you require a detailed payment evaluation. It's not like uh, like UP is following 4% cement and 1% additive. You follow the same. So it varies from uh, side to side depending on your properties of your soil or aggregates. So uh, you need to do a payment evaluation for that. So you can take a trial trial uh, where you take three different cement contents and uh, you do a standard proctor test where you find your uh, MDD and OMC. Then you need to pass cubes and you find your UCS at your uh, 28 days. Then again, we need to do your durability assessment at wet dry cycles. And then you plot a graph of uh, UCS and your uh, wet dry durability where you get your desired uh, cement contents. So this is how you fix your cement content as well as additives uh, in the lab. It's not like uh, it's uh, uh, you fix it for this uh, MSA, we have this percentage of cement and this percentage of additives. So it varies accordingly as per the design. So, yeah. uh, along with that, I just wanted to add one more thing. Uh, uh, see, you are basically talking about a combination of two entities uh, with your recycled material here. Number one being cement and number two being the chemical. If you are if you are uh, wanting to use that. So basically, I mean, one problem that I see in most of these cases that is being done. Of course, let me correct uh, uh, Ajay just one thing. 4 plus 1 is not the combination that uh, UP is using. Only the specification that they have made is that 4% cement is uh, mandatory, minimum. So the amount of uh, cement on top of that and the amount of chemicals that are being added, that is where the mixed design uh, uh, comes into picture and it gets changed. So irrespective of what you are doing, 4% cement is mandatory. Uh, UP has made it mandatory to have 4% cement in now, in terms of your mixed design, when you uh, talk about it, it's a delicate combination of cement and additive. So the problem that uh, many a times this mixed design uh, that I have seen is that there has never been any attempt that is being made to optimize these quantities. Rather, uh, what is typically done in most cases is that 
uh, the typical dosages of a chemical and an approximate proportion of cement that needs to be uh, added in a mix is given by the uh, chemical manufacturer. And basically, in many cases, the mix design uh, person who is actually performing the mix design cross checks and verifies whether this is a good uh, combination or not. Now, technically speaking, strength wise, yeah, fine, it is not a big problem, uh, so to speak. But the issue really comes into picture in terms of costing. Because let us say if somebody tells you that, okay, you start off with 5% cement and use my chemical, 2% of that. Now, the cost of the chemical itself is quite huge, which takes up to be around uh, near about 30% of the cost of the project. So now, the moment you go up from, say, 1, 1.5 to 2, the cost aspect of the project uh, increases exponentially. So now, as a mixed design expert or somebody who is performing the mixed design, the primary objective should be to try and optimize these quantities. Uh, play around with it, you know, keeping in mind uh, the costing aspect as well. Uh, try to minimize the quantities that is required, which can give you just about enough strength that is required for your mixes, which of course, as per uh, the current uh, NRRDA guidelines, should be between 4.5 and uh, uh, 7 megapascals. So that should be the objective of a, a designer when they are performing the mixed design. Next question from John Kenneth. What is formation with done with uh, FDR, uh, FDR for 5.5 meter carriages and interlock shoulders of 5, 50 centimeters on both sides? I think we'll hear from uh, Sheikh Kumar, sir. Uh, I think from uh, Executive engineer of KRFB, so they are doing from in Kerala. So I think we'll hear from Sir Sri Kumar, sir. So, the comparison is not at second. Uh, only I can answer that only after that. Sir, repeat the question. What is the formation width? done with FDR oh. for 5.5 meter carriages and interlock shoulders of 50 centimeters on both sides. The cost analysis is not yet made. Okay, sir. Uh, next question. Uh, can we construct a bit of Width uh, of the uh, uh, magments and everything uh, is that the formation width that you are referring to? Hello. Yes, sir. You can continue. No, is it the formation width uh, that you are talking about? Yes, sir. Yes, you can continue. Yeah. So you have a 5.5 meter width and uh, uh, 15 centimeters on uh, both sides. So that makes it 5.7, right? So, hello? Yes, sir. Continue. Please. So uh, uh, typically, a uh, reclaimer is going to be, able, depending on uh, uh, reclaimer that is being used, uh, uh, the ideally, uh, most people actually nowadays go with 2.4. Uh, uh, Ajay, you may correct me if I'm uh, wrong. So if that is the case, a 5.75 uh, uh, meter uh, wide section uh, may actually require a minimum of three passes. So uh, the extent of uh, the width of uh, 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 embankment that you go on, uh, on the both sides of the road essentially is dependent on the available land space, which in our case in UP, we have actually gone up to around three to four meters on both sides, just to facilitate the movement of uh, a reclaimer and to bypass the traffic uh, that is the local traffic that is at, at that particular place so that they don't interfere with the actual construction work. Again, uh, in, a, in a state like Kerala where uh, the road widths are, are not as much as what you get to see here, uh, giving that kind of a width in uh, embankment or clearance on the embankment may not always be possible. So I would say that, I mean, most of the uh, uh, the village roads or the PMGSY roads uh, in Kerala, I believe, are of uh, 3.5 meter width, which in many cases are going to be extended up to 5.5 
or even 5.7 for that matter, which kind of uh, pushes the right of way that is being available in these locations. So whatever is available beyond that uh, is mostly what you can clear off in terms of your, uh, uh, you know, your shoulders uh, uh, that can be provided in this case. But uh, I think that is, did I answer the question or did I not? I'm not sure if I answered the question. Did I? Hello? Yes, sir. Thank you. OK. Uh, now we can move to the next question. Can we construct a bituminous cores over a stabilized layer without WMM and granular sub base? See, the cementitious, this FDR layer, they are susceptible to your cracking due to your drying shrinkage. So to prevent your reflection cracking coming to your top layer, or to the top layer from the FDR layer, so we are providing this uh, crack relief layer or a SAMI layer. As Srijitsar said, since we are working at very low traffic volumes, so maybe you can put a direct seal coat on the top. Maybe it might work, but uh, I think it's up to us to uh, evaluate this. But right now we are doing uh, either a aggregate interface layer or a SAMI layer on top of this FDR layer. Okay, sir. Next question. Um, I think Srijit sir has uh, raised his hand. Yeah, yeah Srijit sir, please. Uh, yeah, Jay, uh, just uh, wanted to get your opinion on the uh, SAMI layer that's being constructed as part of this. Can you just briefly explain uh, the type of SAMI layer that's being constructed? So right now, so we are... Glass fiber type uh, geotextile? Or yeah, geotextile. We are doing that there? geotextile membrane, sir, right now. Is it a fiber, glass fiber based? Or? Yeah, fiber, fiber, sir, fiber. So that means fiber it fiber. can be technically sort of present or <laughs> we can try because it can break, you know. Is it glass fiber type of uh, Yeah, some places we use that glass fiber. Sometimes we use that plastic coating also, sir. Like oh, a rubber thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but did you use a sort of a, a modified bitumen and sort of a seal coat anywhere as a sort of inner layer? Uh, without, no, using in some, without using geodesic. Yeah, yeah, in some places in Northeast, we are directly put uh, your uh, pre, uh, premix carpet top of this FDR layer also. So as you said, without the OC. Yeah, without any okay. layers also. But, uh, so any 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 indication of cracking or anything? So right now it's working fine, sir. But uh, I think we have to see in the rainy season how it works. Uh, also, any experience on uh, micro cracking or pre cracking? Do you have any experience here? No, no. In some places, I think in Andaman, I think uh, the road got cracked, and uh, I think we are awaiting the results from Tripura how it performs. No, what I was mentioning was. Uh, because I did in one project, but I didn't get the result of that. We okay. were we will do pre cracking as per the mm -hmm. PCA as okay. PC after the second day or third day. Just put the rollers and just go for a pre cracking and then put the bit mm -hmm. there over it. So actually, I didn't get the results of it because it was a very small okay. road, a very small feeder road. I did as a sort of a trial, uh, but just wanted to know whether you have some experience like that and instead of going for this. Uh, Sammy layer, did you go for a pre cracking or a micro cracking and then directly apply the bitumen layers over it? Yeah, right now, in uh, only in Northeast projects, I think we have executed, sir, and north in uh, southern parts. So I think we'll uh, get that results and share with you. Sir. Okay, and one more doubt uh, regarding the resilient modelers that you have been using as far as the FDR layer is concerned. Are you yeah. using the 500 MPA as far as IRC 37 or I think SP89 has some confusing. Yeah, we are using that 1400 to 1700 MPA. So that is a that is the resident model that you are using. Yeah, yeah. So Shamsar, can you add something on that? Because regarding the design part, the uh, model is. The model is, I mean, I do not remember the exact model value that was uh, recommended uh, for design. Uh, because, uh, I mean, uh, right now I am in a different, uh, uh, meeting and I, I was, it's about a payment meeting right now. The FDR numbers, I quickly do not remember off of my, uh, head right now. 
so i can always check back and let you know uh, in terms of the modulus numbers that is used as an input for your design that's what the question is right yeah yeah sure yeah that's so i, I can get back with you on that but right now i could not recollect i'm sorry okay great. and also can you add anything on this can you hear yes sir regarding uh, the modulus value is it regarding modulus value i think 1400 uh, what ajay has mentioned is it right yeah it, yeah it's right for irc 37 it recommends 5000 but that is crushed aggregate with cement so yes. since you are dealing with soil cement mix we go for this 1400 2700 on sp89 yes yes Next question, uh, have you done any pavement FDR with immersion? I think in UP we have done some uh, uh, with emulsion also, uh, but it was like CFR, cold in place recycling. We also done with uh, foam bitumen also. So that is a different technology. Uh, we have done with the C uh, emulsion as well as with the foam bitumen also. Ajay, I think uh, we need more uh, research on this uh, uh, SAMI layer with and without SAMI layer or uh, the different types of SAMI layers. I think more, yeah. uh, more research need to be carried out in different locations uh, based like, like what you mentioned about the uh, OGPS on top of the FDR, I mean, FDR directly. Uh, so how it works with the uh, uh, rainy season and other things, you know, seasonal changes and other things. You no, know, I think a lot of things has to be uh, come up uh, in course of time. I think the UP have just started. I think uh, the evaluation part is also to be a very important point. That what I remember. I think uh, Rose Sham is also working a uh, lot of work he has done. And from my experience, what we have done, limited lab experiment. And in that, what we found is uh, we have conducted a an experiment in uh, old BMJSA road where we have more of aggregate particle and less uh, soil particles. So where we could uh, see this works with uh, cement alone. But the case may be different when we are having more uh, subgrade content is coming in. And, and especially in rural roads, as you know, when we are uh, taking up older roads, like that may be sometimes 2, 2.5 meter width only. But you have to make it to a larger uh, width or a, the line width. So the probably the subgrade content also will get vary in different regions. And that is why I told earlier, like, uh, there should be some... Uh, candy roots that only to be recycled. That is what I believe. Am I right, uh, Professor Shah? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, define, you are talking about uh, the surfacing that it needs to be given, right, uh, Professor Daniel? Yes. Ah, yes. So, uh, my way of looking at it is that, uh, like what has been mentioned earlier, providing a seal coat that in most cases is going to be just enough as long as the uh, traffic that is using the surface is minimal because the traction and the wear and tear can actually uh, cause breakages and uh, removal of uh, the surface layers, uh, uh, especially if there are heavy traffic that is uh, using these uh, surfaces. Now, the second thing is uh, use of alternate uh, options like uh, chipping carpet or chip seals and everything. Yes, it has been attempted in many places uh, here. Uh, and uh, finally, moving on. Uh, towards uh, BC as an option here was more or less uh, an administrative decision that was taken uh, considering the riding quality that is required for these layers. Now, if I talk about it in terms of uh, uh, Kerala scenario or Kerala perspective, I would, uh, my way of thinking would be that uh, considering the level of, uh, uh, what do you call it, the rainfall that uh, uh, our state receives, uh, having a proper uh, waterproofing layer on the surface uh, may be an additional requirement uh, that needs to be thought of uh, in our cases. So, chipping carpet or even a chip seal uh, surface may not, may not, I mean, I'm not sure, I'm just deliberating at this point, may not be a very, uh, uh, you know, effective approach for uh, uh, Kerala scenario. And uh, considering the traffic 
uh, seal codes again also is a possibility but uh, still needs to be thought of because of these two factors traffic and the rainfall so that would be more or less my uh, thoughts uh, on that uh, what is going to be effective in uh, uh, in kerala in terms of these uh, surface seas i think uh, pmgs uh, if i remember correctly based on one of the discussions that uh, i have had with uh, uh, sandeep sir i think a uh, similar uh, reason was quoted and uh, uh, now uh, pmgs y is going for uh, bc surfaces maybe a 3 cm bc on all these uh, uh, sections that they are uh, considering maybe anil sir you might because i'm not recollecting uh, completely maybe you can confirm or uh, uh, you know correct me if i am wrong yes yes and we also have the same concerns like if we go for an ogpc or a, a surface i mean i don't know what what happens to a surface facing in some cases surface facing is also done uh, at up i think and recently we visited a site uh, kifbi had already done this fdr uh, i think long back uh, some three i don't remember exactly the period but uh, we recently visited but the road doesn't have any sami layer and it's a, an mdr kind of road but it looks good after a few years or so so see it depends like it is also a, uh, a good traffic it's having a good traffic also so case to by case we have to analyze i think not much cracks or anything like that what we can see on the uh, gifpi roads Okay, sir. One last question. When we construct base layer with FDR, as it is semi-rigid, flexible pavement, and a scratch developed along with increase in time, we finally, um, finally, the base layer loses the required UCS of 0.5 mm. I think Shamsir, I think you can answer this question. Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I did not hear the question. Your voice got broken. If somebody can reiterate the question for me, that would be good. I didn't yes, sir. I think uh, when we construct base layer with FDR as it is semi-rigid flexible pavement and as cracks there along increase in time, finally the base layer loses the required UCS of 4.5 mPa. Okay. Still, uh, uh, can somebody else uh, re? Uh, I heard a part of it that uh, if the base layer uh, starts forming cracks, will it lose the strength? What I mean, can you just one yeah, more exactly. time? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it loses its strength, and we uh, come down from that four point five amp uh, strength value. Okay. Four times. So what is the question there? Uh, yeah, the, uh, I have the question. So my name is Vaisha. Uh huh. I'm from PWD. Uh, so, like uh, after doing this uh, FDR, so with the increase in time, as the strength decreases, then what is the remedial measures in this case? So again, we have to do that FDR, or like uh, we have such a, a like treatments or other thing. So, in terms of losing the strength, as long as it is properly done, the typical service life uh, design life of these sections are ten years. now okay. practically saying uh, 10 years is uh, on the smaller lower side you can easily get a life of near about 14 to 15 years of those uh, uh, fdr layer that you are uh, preparing i mean let us not push it maybe 10 to 12 years is easy number that you can get out of it now uh, what do you mean by a failure is it cracking is that what you are talking about yes sir so if it is cracking then what is the option is that the question yeah. Yes. So obviously, if it is cracking, then the load carrying capacity of that layer is going to go down, and uh, with cracks, uh, whatever you do, the crack is going to cut through, uh, reflect through the HMA layer that you are providing on top of it. So obviously, the failure is going to be visible from the surface. So now, as an alternative, uh, what is the best way is to, at least in the way I look at it, is to uh, remove the existing uh, BC layer, chip it off, or even uh put a additional crack relief layer on top of it so that uh, the cracks does not actually percolate through and uh, top it up with uh, uh the required amount of uh, dvms uh so that the structural capacity of the pavement can be uh, not completely retrieved but enough to sustain the service life 
but again so the base player yeah. which have been damaged due to this like due to the cracking so that the isolated part can be rectified or like uh, let it remain like that it is not that easy it is not that easy because you have a monolithic construction uh, right i mean it's a single gas construction that you are doing which is about a few kilometers tens of kilometers and if you have just like a concrete you are comparing i believe to a concrete slab that is broken along the corner if i okay yes. can understand so that kind of a corrective measure uh, possibly is not going to be easy because it is a semi rigid kind of uh, material so cutting and removing the layers uh, is practically not that easy in this particular case because the moment you try to do that being a low strength uh, layer or a semi rigid layer additional cracks starts popping up and the slab itself is going to cut through or the cracks are going to propagate along the length of these uh, sections so that kind of an option in many cases may not be uh, feasible may not be feasible but uh, one other way of looking at it is that you can re uh, i mean i don't know if it is going to be effective or not you can just consider that as a uh, you know just like a Uh, that broken section as a, a granular material yeah right you can just broke it down and uh, you can uh, uh, rework on that particular just like creating a patch when you are uh, doing a patching work on your pavement section you can do base repairs right repair of the base sections yes. similar to that you can do a base repairs on that section and uh, 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 a crack relief layer on top i believe is going to be uh, required again i'm not completely sure about the accuracy of my statement but i think that can also be a possibility provided you put a surfacing on top of it and give a overlay on top that is uh, just enough to retain the or uh, regain the required structural value of the section sir so the uh, yeah. one more question related to it is that the water table in kerala is relatively higher side so uh, like uh, we have to do this construction process through the uh, summer season or like we can do it uh, uh like across the uh, season like any seasons and one more thing like in hilly terrain in kerala we have that spring coming out from the rock so this is also deteriorating our sub base strength so these two issues are majorly faced in uh, like in kerala state so uh, whether this fdr will withstand such issues or like we have to find some alternatives see fdr is uh, the moment you have drainage issues on a pavement section FDR is not a, a, a preferred option for that, and it can be. It is better to perform this process uh, after the uh, drainage issues of that section has been addressed. Now, the simple reason is that once water comes in into your layer, you are going to have to. Uh, you're going to be having a loss of material, loss of cement, uh, because of uh, you know cement can get dissolved and leak out of the section. so the expected strength gain that you are or the strength gain that you are expecting over a longer period of time will not be achieved which means that due to loading uh, uh the deteriorations actually happen much faster if you have a, a drainage issue in your pavement section so as long as you address your uh, until you address your uh, uh, drainage issue fdr cannot be considered as a feasible option now about the uh, hilly road sections that you were talking about uh, or uh, rather uh, you know what was that question again i'm sorry can you please repeat like the water springs come out from the rock and they damage this base layer yes so that is a major issue we are facing like in district like kottayam and idukki we are facing such issues yes so again uh, you don't have much in terms of option you can provide uh, you know earthen drains or something on the sides and uh, at the proper locations you can you know uh, bring the water to the other side and let it go i mean just like right a typical construction are, like right, right, right now we are doing like uh, we are going for that interlock paving tile so that the pressure get released at few points so the this is the only thing we are like earthen drains are, it is not uh, capable of uh, carrying like the quantity of water coming out increases with thing so uh, no, i, I was goes... saying that in uh, in the perspective of uh, fdr because you cannot uh, okay. add uh, uh, what interlock tiles on top of uh, uh, a section like you can do that i mean uh, how effective that is going to be i don't know but i was answering from that perspective otherwise yes uh, interlocking tiles can relieve the water bore the pressure that is there and uh, what again move across and uh, pavement remain intact if not a cross drainage uh, feature just like a uh, 
you know, a box culvert or something can actually take care of that issue if you are doing a conventional kind of a uh, section. But FDR, you include these things, it might, you can do that still because, uh, uh, you know, if you have a bridge or a, uh, what do you call it, a, a culvert uh, across your uh, pavement section, you can proceed your construction till that point and cross over and do start working from the other side, just like a normal road, right? You can think of okay. something similar in this case as well. Okay. Uh, I mean, maybe pipe culvert may not be a good option because uh, the top surface you may not be able to, uh, uh, you know, stabilize. Uh, we will not get the required, uh, uh, you know, clearance on top if it's a pipe culvert yeah. that you're using. But the actual that... culvert is also not like uh, like in Kerala we have that ribbon development. So uh, exploding a rock or cutting a hard rock <clears throat> nearby houses will be there. So. Uh, like finally, we come up with this issue every place. Like we don't have we don't have the provision to explode hard rock and uh, do a culvert or a, like a pipe culvert uh, at such places. So and at that we give a dip or uh, like uh, let the water drain over the surface of the wearing course. So many places through like uh, if we go for a, a guarantee period of three to five years, the the road get damaged within two two years due to this uh, poor water coming from the rocks. Right. Uh, again, uh, even for your uh, conventional approach, this can be considered as an alternative. But uh, in this this uh, FDR kind of a thing, uh, I would say may not be that that good an option. Uh, because uh, uh, like uh, the earlier question which you told about the UCS value, uh, like it may uh, like when the water table is high, that UCS will get decreased with uh, time. Like the uh, cement will leach out into the soil. So, uh, like uh, one visual, the service provider, I think visual, uh, some other, like one company was there. They told like when they uh, calculated UCS value, it increased with the time. Like uh, it, it went on increasing uh, um, along the yes. year. So it is counter like uh, some. No, year, some uh, are, it will increase. They, what they are saying is not exactly wrong, not completely wrong. Uh, some there are certain uh, chemicals. Uh, I think. Uh, Stable, stable road, right? That is what uh, yeah. these people, uh, this Vishu uh, Samudra, use. If I'm, if I'm, uh, if I recollect correctly, so there are certain chemicals. See the chemicals. There are these are of different types. Their mode of uh, action uh, is going to be completely different uh, in all these chemicals. Some are going to be providing uh, low uh, initial strength and a high uh, delayed strength. Some would work otherwise. Some will give. That means some will give high initial strength and. Uh, the strength gain actually wears out as time goes and on. An admixture in concrete, which you use. Sorry? Like an admixture which we use in concrete. Every Everything has a different property. Different uh, like way of uh, uh, tackling the actually. issue. And uh, there are other cases where uh, uh, the, uh, the additive actually helps in reducing the uh, moisture absorption potential of your soil. So this works in different ways. I mean... So, uh, in the case of uh, Vishu Samudra, I think they are the ones that we have actually seen uh, their uh, UCS numbers going up to around uh, 9.5 plus after about 15 days, I mean, after about uh, 45 days or so. So, I mean, when you say that I am getting a 9.5 plus uh, in terms of uh, unconfined compressive strength may sound good in terms of uh, uh, the numbers, but uh, can have... Uh, alternate issues in terms of uh, crackings and all those things uh, or uh, the the, so uh, the graph I think sir, the graph will go down after some time because uh, the cracking will develop and the material uh, loss will be uh, getting more and more than that will be coming down right sir over a period of time yes of course as the uh, uh, number of uh, loading cycles increases it will not the deterioration is not going to be very fast but yes end of the day every payment has got to fail and irrespective whether it's a concrete pavement, a bituminous pavement or a FDR pavement, I mean, these are designed for a certain period of time, certain okay. number of repetitions, load repetitions, right? So as long as uh, we are able to meet or that pavement is able to meet those uh, repetitions, it's a successful design or a successful construction. Now, uh, it is not a, you know, it is not a perpetual pavement that we are talking about, which lasts for 50 years. Right, so uh, it is bound to fail, but as long as it is meeting the uh, design criteria in terms of service life and uh, uh, axial load repetitions, then it's a, it's a good uh, design. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Sure. Hopefully, I answered your question. Yes.
Srijit sir, you have something to say? Actually, uh, regarding that long-term loss of strength, that question that uh, he was asking. Uh, so I have, uh, I just thought I will share my experience in one of the project in Cambodia, where it was almost, I think it was the 12th or 13th year, it was sort of a cement-treated uh, bay, there was a DBSP over it. So that cement-treated bay, they were, they, say, they were saying it was, they were using 3% cement, uh, plus sand, pure sand, it doesn't have much clay and all, no? So when, when we were doing the trial pitching and all, so after I think 12 years, if I remember correct, it was just crumbling like anything. So the solution what we gave was basically, you know, we did an FWD and then just gave an overlay thickness. So, so, so when he was asking about that long-term loss of strength, uh, my experience is it's possible. It's really possible uh, because uh, long-term it will crack and obviously it will just crumble like anything. So when we are taking out these... Uh, uh, samples of uh, uh, what you call it, CTB. So you can just take it as small lumps, but when we uh, when we put some pressure, it just comes crumbles. So that's what <laughs> that's my experience on that. And regarding that uh, cross drainage, I, would, I don't know. Uh, my suggestion would be just to try out a drainage geocomposite uh, because uh, as a layer. No, not I'm I'm not talking in relation to the FDR part, but when he was asking about this uh, these issues regarding the water. Uh, especially cross drainage part, uh, I would suggest maybe you can have a look at uh, drainage com uh, composite McCaffrey and or they have some good uh, drainage composites. So maybe you can uh, try and see how it's behaving. So just a suggestion. Uh, actually, it was very interesting. So I thank all Ajay, Anil, Anil sir, Sandeep sir, Shannar sir, Sri Kumar, Sri Jit, and S. V. Patel, and all the participants. I hope we can uh, end the session now. Thank you, sir. Thank you for inviting. Okay. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank bye you. all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye.